Hey folks, uh, sorry I left you guys hanging the last couple of weeks. Um, I had some videos I promised to you, but I unfortunately got extremely busy in the shop here. Um, it's been a crazy year uh, with flies and everything else, which is a good thing, you know. Um, but uh, I'm going to take care of you guys this week, and I'm actually going to shoot a couple videos and uh, spread them out over the course of this week. So uh, I'm in the middle of a relatively large order of um, bucktail trailers and stuff right now uh, but once I finish that I'll be doing some other things but I figured I'd get into the midst of this while I'm taking a little bit of a break and uh, we're gonna do a couple different flies this week I, I wanna get back onto that Dave Goulet series um, the first one we're gonna do which uh, we're gonna highlight in this um, particular video today and this is actually a um, specific hatch that's coming off on my local waters right now, um, uh, we get golden drakes. They're sporadic. They're relatively large mayfly, and they're bright yellow. Um, and when uh, when the fish get on them, uh, or those bugs are hatching, it's usually a later in the day type thing. Uh, you're looking at it's like most drakes. You know they're they're burrowers, burrower nymphs, and you know they have a tendency to inhabit some of those more silty and muddier areas of uh, most rivers that do have them. Um, what you will find uh, in most of those fisheries that do have these bugs, you know, they will have the tendency to inhabit that type of water. So if you're a dry fly fisherman and you encounter these, um, they're great because you can see them. They're very, very large and they're bright, bright yellow, like a canary. Um, the entire body of these things are. Um, so Dave, actually it was one of his favorite hatches to fish um, when talking with him and I remember you know talking I never had the opportunity to fish with Dave which really stinks I would have loved to have thrown some casts with him um, and he's he's up there in his age now but um, that was one of his favorite fi uh, hatches to fish on the Farmington because when those particular insects were coming off and they're sporadic, they don't come off in blanket hatches, but you could always entice a fish or two, and usually some better fish on these. And he came up with an emerger pattern, which is brilliant, to be quite honest with you. It's very, very simple, and we're going to tie it today. It's his Potamantis emerger, and, um, you know, he would, you know, I've heard stories from other guys that had seen him, you know, he'd get out of the shop, go down to the river, about this time of year, and he'd just sit there on the bank, and he'd wait for a fish to pop, and he'd see a fish, and then he'd go over and he'd pick it off. So, you know, I've had some really good success with this particular fly pattern. It's very, very easy. We'll go through the um, detailed instructions on how to tie it. And if you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. What I am going to do is um, I'm going to talk a little bit about hooks today with it because, um, you know, the original version that Dave tied was on a straight shank dry fly hook. But I'm going to show you um, the hook that I like to tie it on and the reason why. Um, and I'll discuss that a little bit and I'll also talk about you know, why you want to choose these types of hooks um, for these style of flies. So with enough ado, we'll get into that, and then uh, I'll try and get a couple more videos out for you this week, and uh, that's it. All right, folks, so here we are in the Dave Goulet series tying the Potamantis Emerger today. Um, the cool thing about this fly, pretty, pretty easy. It's really only like three or four materials, but um, you have a whole selection of different types of hooks you can use. Dave typically liked a standard uh, shanked um, dry fly hook. I've got a number 10 Daiichi 1190 in here, but you can also use a Partridge Ideal Dry. I, I prefer the Daiichi a little better. Um, only reason being is this Partridge hook is actually lighter wire and on a bigger fish it'll actually bend out. Um, you can even use a shorter shanked Scud style hook on there if you want. Uh, the new Eric's uh, dry fly hooks are great, um, etc. We're going to use a larger thread today. He typically liked to use a uni thread in like a 6 aught, but I'm actually going to use a yellow colored UTC 140. Um, it's pretty much the same, but it lies a little flatter. I just like the way that this works. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our thread and start right around where the eye is, and we're going to just start laying a thread base down. So you get a few turns on there, you can kind of clip this off. And we're going to go just about, this is a barbless hook, right about where the, the beak would be or the barb would be on the hook. Now, um, the trailing shuck on this is pretty cool. 
Dave uh, had a multi-part trailing shuck on this. Part of it's ostrich hurl and brown. So if you've got an ostrich hurl or a whole feather, you know, we always have a tendency, and this one's pretty beat up, to use this longer stuff here, right? But you'll also notice that there's all these shorter feathers here. Well, that's where you can use these for. Um, we're going to take about four or five of these, and you want them to be roughly a little more than one and a half times the length of the overall shank of the hook, up to two. So I'll come in here, and I'll take probably five or six of these. You can go in and cut them if you'd like, whatever works for you. Because you got to remember, these are all going to get wet and kind of pile together. If they're not all the same length, that's completely fine. So I cut five or six of those from the, the ostrich feather. Take a look about where they're at. Because you remember, these are burrowing nymphs, these things are. So they're pretty big too. Once I've got those in place, like you see here, I'm just going to kind of loosely lash them to the hook. Trim the butt ends off. And then the next I'm going to do to finish off the remainder of that trailing shuck is you can use any kind of synthetic dubbing. He used the synthetic brown. I want to say he probably used like an Antron, but I'm actually going to use um, like a Polycatus. This works really well. Jack Mikovitz, this stuff's awesome. It's great stuff. And it's in a brown. It really matches it. And I'm just going to kind of touch dub a loop on there, or a dubbing noodle rather. And I'm just going to build that up. Probably use a little bit more. And this is going to butt right up against uh, the position where that wing is going to be. And if I have to go over this, you can kind of see here, I'm going to go right over that, right to there, and leave it. Now, the wing on the ones that Dave used to sell in his shop were made with CDC. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of using CDC, so whenever I tied these, I always used rabbit's foot as you see here. And some of the rabbit's foot that I have is extremely long, so I can make a pretty cool, pretty long wing on this. So I'm going to come in here, cut a generous clump, and I'm going to go in with my brush. And this is just natural. You don't need to have any dyed. You should cut if you want. Natural rabbit fur. That's about how big. I want my wing to bleed into this trailing shuck, like you see here. Once I've done that, I'm going to transfer it to my fingers, and then I'm going to take my scissors and just clip the butt ends off. And then I'm going to tie them in with a couple of loose wraps to start, and take a look where my wing is. If I need to build a little bit of taper in there, because it's too much, after I've done that, build my taper but by holding it on top with your fingers and then using progressively tighter thread wraps you'll be able to bind that stuff right into place so I get a lot of questions on you know even on the smaller flies tying in these rabbit um, foot wings you know, especially when we start getting down to like 18s and 20s you know how do you get the wing to be proportionate to the size of the fly that's the same trick I just used right there. Basically, you measure up your wing, see about where it's going to be, and then clip off the rest. If you pre-clip it like that, then you don't have to worry about it getting in the way. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to use a synthetic dubbing on this for the um, just for the head. And my suggestion to you is, hold on as I get my tying wax. It's over at my other bench. The joys of being a commercial tire. Um, you can use the Antron in this as well, but I I really like. And I'm going to put some wax on this thread first, and you'll see why in a second. I really like the Scud Dub, and I had to had to laugh because I somebody commented on on my website about how this stuff is an inhalation hazard and it's. It's hazardous and you shouldn't use it. And... Okay, dude. Cry me a river. Anything's an inhalation hazard in fly tying. Let's not be overly sensitive. 
This is Antron fibers from a carpet. It's best if it's spun into a dubbing loop, but with a little bit of wax, you can actually dub this stuff on. And what I like about it, as you'll see here, is it's very coarse, and all these little fibers kind of pan off of this stuff, and it'll come, it'll make some nice little buggy appendages to this. Once I've kind of dubbed that in place, you got to remember this is a much larger fly than most of one of the larger mayflies that we have here. It's not as big as a green drake. But these things can be as big as a size, you know, 8 and a 6. Once I've kind of got that in place, next thing I'm going to do, after I kind of dub that in, I'm just going to do a whip finish. That, that's essentially the fly. That's it right there. Boom. You're looking at it. That's the Dave Goulet Potamantis Emerger. Rather. Um, this is a great little fly pattern. I use these, and I say little, it's big. These are coming off right now on lower stretches of my home waters. And when these things are coming off and they're, you know, interlaced in between sulfurs and all that other good stuff, ISOs and whatnot, you'll see these things on the water. Um, they're huge. They're like, like I said, tens, eights, sixes, bright yellow. Um, you could take this same, I'm going to use it, use the word guys, platform, and you could probably um, alter the colors on this to, for some of your other Drake patterns. All right, um, that's it. That's the fly. Not much to it. Like I said, Dave liked to use CDC on his, but for me, um, I'm not a big fan of tying with CDC just because, you know, you catch a fish, it gets waterlogged, and now you're spending 20 minutes. Okay, I exaggerate. You're spending way too much time trying to redress that stuff and dry it out to get it back fishable, where I can basically, if I've got some good snowshoe rabbit, like the stuff I have here, I can essentially make the same wing if not better and it's going to last a heck of a lot longer so that's the uh, Dave Goulet Potamantis Emerger I highly suggest you have a few of these in your box for when you see golden drakes thanks for tuning in I got some more for you I'm going to start doing some videos on a more regular basis alright folks take care